Hello guys, welcome to this new video. So today we're going to be going through the May 24 time zone 1 relativity questions from the old paper free option part. As always, I recommend you attempt these questions before I go through the solutions so that you can see where you would have gone wrong. And of course, if you have any questions or if I do anything wrong, then just feel free to leave a comment and then I will reply. So in question one, I mean question three, but question one, the first relativity question in this paper, we have a space station which is, which has a length of 100 meters according to an observer at rest on the space station. And then we have another observer as usual moving with respect to the space station with a speed of 0 0.6 c. And in part a, we need to write down the length of the space station according to Galilean relativity. So in Galilean relativity, we don't take into account relativistic effects. So there's no length contraction. There's nothing really happening. It's simply going to be the 100 meters that we have measured. In part B1, we need to define what is meant by um, proper length. So by proper length, we usually mean that uh, it is the length of an object when measured by a stationary observer or by measured an ob observer at rest. So what we could say is the length measured by an observer at rest. So basically, we have this space station and we have observer A in it. If observer A measures an object inside of the space station, that object is at rest with respect to observer A, and therefore observer A will measure the proper length of the object. We could also think about this as um, this being the, the longest length possible to measure of this object, as if we would be in a moving um, observer, moving frame with respect to this object. According to length, contra length contraction, we would measure a shorter length. And in part two, we need to calculate the length of the space station according to observer B with reference to special relativity. So for this, we need to calculate the gamma factor, as always. So this gamma factor is simply 1 over the square root of 1 minus, and then 0 0.6 c squared over c squared. Z, the c squared just cancels out. So this will be the square root of 1 minus 0 0.6 squared. If we plug this into our calculator, we get 1.25. And well, we know that we have length contraction here. So we have the usual formula, L0, L is equal to L0 over gamma. I think what's a nice, oh, this, this zero always refers to the proper length. So this is basically the length of an object is equal to the proper length divided by the gamma factor. This is how we can think about it. So the length is just going to be 100 divided by the gamma factor 1.25 which will be 80 meters. In part C, we need to outline how these results in part B2 contradict Newton's postulates concerning time and space. So what Newton assumed is that <clears throat> time and space are absolute. So, so they're basically constant for, for all, all, all observers. So assume that time and space are absolute slash constant. However, in relativity, we know that uh, this is not the case. So these are not really constant. And um, we see that we measure different lengths. So the thing that contradicts, so the, our result, what we, what we saw is that we measured a length that is shorter than the proper length of the object. Therefore, it's possible to measure different lengths for the same object. So, so, so this uh, time and space are not constant according to um, relativity. So we can say different lengths, um, me length measurements contradict Newton's assumptions for two marks. All right, so this was question uh, two. 
And then, so, so question two, we have two, um, two particles traveling in opposite directions above the ground. And well, the velocity with respect to ground of particle A is 0 0.6 C. This is 0 0.6 C to the right, and this is 0 0.7 C to the left. We need to calculate the velocity of particle B according to particle A. So obviously we cannot simply add the velocities here because that would contradict our um, uh, Einstein's postulates, which state that um, the speed of light is constant. We cannot really have anything move moving faster than the speed of light. So here we have to use the transformation formula for velocities. So what we can say here is that we can let the ground frame be frame S. This um, particle A can be S prime, and then this will be S double prime. And essentially what we want to find is find, so let, let's say that this is, speed, this is speed V and this is speed U. What we want to find is U prime in the frame of S prime, right? So we want to find the speed of this in this frame. So what we, what we can do here is um, use this conversion formula. So in, the data, in our data booklet, we have um, u prime is equal to u minus v divided by one minus u v over c squared, right? So this is going to tell us the speed of u in this frame where this frame's velocity is simply v. So all we have to do now is basically plug in. So u is going to be minus 0 0.75 c because it's moving to the left and therefore we have to put it as negative and then minus 0 0.6 c is the speed of our frame and then it will be 1 minus uh, u so 0 0.6 times minus 0 0.75 and then both are multiplied with a c divided by c squared and so what this becomes is that well from the from here we can cancel out these c's and on top we can factor out another c and so we get this formula. But I mean, we could already just plug it into our calculator. Doesn't really make a difference at this point, but perhaps like this, if we have to plug in less, then there's a smaller chance of mistake. In our calculator, if we plug this in, we get minus 0.93 C. So this is the speed of B with respect to A, again, using the transformation velocity formula. The particles were emitted at the same time according to observer X at rest with respect to the ground. So let's say X was over here, the person standing over here. And another, another observer Y is moving parallel to the ground. So we have Y moving this way. We need to show that the particles are not emitted simultaneously in the frame of observer Y according to the Lorentz transformation equations. So Simul simultaneous emission would mean that the the delta t so that the difference in time when they were emitted would be zero meaning they were emitted at the same time so um what, what we need to do here is well use the use the transformation equation so we can say that delta t prime again this is simply in the data booklet is equal to gamma times delta t minus v times delta x over c squared. So what, what we can note here is that, well, delta t is going to be zero, right? So in the frame of the stationary person, they were emitted at um, the same time. So in the, in the stationary frame, delta t was, was simply zero. So this is zero. So we get that this is equal to gamma or minus gamma times v times delta x all over c squared. And well, what we can see is that delta x is in fact not zero. So in according to the um, stationary observer, these two particles were not emitted in the same position in space. There's a delta x, there's a, there's a distance between where they were emitted. So if delta x is not zero, it means that delta t prime is also not going to be zero. So delta t prime cannot be zero. And therefore, we can conclude that they cannot be emitted, they were not emitted at the same time in the frame of observer Y, obviously. Emitted at the same time 
according to y or in the frame of y all right so that was that question and in this question as we see we have a space-time diagram we're given the ct axis for observer a so these are these axes and then we have the axis for observer b as well and at the origin their space-time diagram clock their space-time diagram clocks were synchronized so we need to calculate the speed of observer b with respect to observer a so this is um, pretty simple uh, knowledge about space-time diagrams we need to look at this angle between the ct axes we usually call this theta and we know that the tangent of this theta so tan theta will give us basically the relative speed so in the formula we're in the formula book we're given tan theta is v over c so we have the tangent of this theta we should know is opposite over adjacent so this side has a length of four on this x-axis this side has a length of five on the ct axis so that's going to be four over five we could also say that this is 0 0.8 0 0.8 and therefore if we rearrange for v we will get that v is 0 0.8 c so this is the speed of observer b with respect to a and then for observer a an event has space time coordinates x equals three and ct is equal to one we need to label this point e on this diagram so in frame a this is for frame a the normal axis and well 3 1 is right here so that's a pretty straightforward and let's not forget we need to label it e point e in part two we need to according to the observer b event e occurs before observer a and observer b meet justify the statement so they meet when their origins coincide right so what we need to do is find the the, the ct prime coordinates of this event the way we can do that is is just like any normal graph we have to draw a line parallel to the axis that we are looking at so if we want to find the ct prime coordinates we have to draw a line parallel to the x prime axis through e so if we do that i'll do my best to draw like a parallel line but this line and this line should be parallel so it's obviously not going through straight e but it should go just assume that it crosses through the grid marks so we can see that the ct prime coordinates over here are smaller than zero right so so t prime is going to be smaller than zero so we could say line parallel to x prime through 3 1 that's how we can find the ct ct prime coordinates and what we can see what we can see here is that t prime is smaller than zero which means um it took place before so this event um took bef took place before they met we need to determine the space-time coordinates of the event according to observer b so space-time coordinates pretty much just mean the the ct prime coordinates and the x prime coordinates so there are a couple of ways we can do this one of the ways is um is, is is simply following through with this idea of drawing lines parallel to the axes so we can read this coordinate off as about like well this is like one two three the mark scheme accepts like a range so you don't have to make it exactly parallel but um but according to them it's minus 2.3 so this cross is at minus 2.3 so that will be our ct prime is equal to minus 2.3 and then we can do the same thing by drawing a line parallel to the ct prime axis to find the x prime coordinates so if i can draw a line parallel then that's about parallel then we can again read off this point there's going to be one two three four five and the mark scheme accepts anything between three and four so this will be fine for us so we get that x prime is equal to 3.5 just like this 
We could also use Lorentz transformations. So basically the way we would do that is by finding the gamma factor. Again, we know the speed was 0.8c. So if we do one over the square root of one minus 0.8 squared, we will get that this is 1.66. And then we can use the Lorentz transformation. So we know the formula t prime is equal to gamma times t minus vx over c squared. Since we need the c t prime coordinates, we can multiply both, but both sides of the equation by c, and therefore we get this equation, and then we plug in the values. And right, we know the c t coordinates <clears throat> in the original frame was 1, so we just plug in 1, and then minus 0 0.8 times 3 will give us minus 2.3. So this is the precise answer, and then we can do the same thing for um, x prime. So x prime is gamma times x minus vt, again in our data booklet, and this will be 1.66 times 3 minus 0 0.8 times 1. This will give us 3.7. So my parallel lines were pretty accurate. At the end of the day, we need to show that the now then the space-time interval between the clock synchronization and the event is invariant. So the space-time interval is usually represented with this delta s squared. So this according to our data booklet is c delta t squared minus delta x squared. So we simply need to plug in the values here. So for let's say for event a, I mean for observer a, this is going to be equal to ct squared, so 1 squared minus delta x squared, so minus 3 squared, will give us minus 8. For observer b, we will have um, 2.3 squared minus 3.7 squared is equal to minus 8. Now, it might be a little bit of an interesting question. If we, if we, are, if we would have just been satisfied with these solutions, we would have noticed that, well, they're in fact not going to be the same. So probably it's a better idea to do this precise solution because by drawing these parallel lines, we're not going to be very precise, and therefore it's going to seem like this is invariant. So yeah, that, that's something to keep in mind. And then there are two more questions in this paper. However, um, none of these are still in the syllabus, so we don't need to go through that anymore.